Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to topic one, DQ2. You have made it through one discussion qu question so far this week, and we are getting ready for the second one. This one is lots of fun. This one is called linear regression. Linear regression is a way to predict some values, okay? First of all, read carefully the instructions, goals, on this tab, everybody notice there are tabs down here, just like there are, are all of our. Here's the instructions, the Excel skills you're going to learn, the math skills we're going to learn. And back over here we go, getting started. First of all, uh, once again, everybody, please type your name in the blue box. All right, once we are done with that, we are ready to get started. If you scroll down here below, you'll see there's a checklist says claim your mathematical identity. All right, we did it. We opened the linear fit tab. We did that. We entered our name. We did that. We're ready to go. We're ready to start with the slope and the intercept. Everybody, watch this. Click on the cell B21. Enter your equal to start your formula and start typing. I-N-T, E-R. Okay, notice it pops up on your screen. Click on it. Left click with your mouse to select it. Now highlight the Y values, that is in column C, that's the distance, all right? Now I'll type in a comma. Now column B, that's the speed. Close parentheses and hit enter. Everybody notice it's already formatted to two decimal places. You wanna leave it just like that, just leave it alone, right? You don't need to do a thing. Now, if you don't see any values, if for some reason you have no values there, you may want to add some more decimal places to see if your answer is really close to zero, right? So if it's not, just leave it as it is and you'll have two decimal places. Let's now do the slope, all right? So equals slope. Once again, click on that formula and now enter the data again, left click with your mouse, highlight cells C12 through C17, enter a comma. Now let's get the X values. B12 to B17, close parentheses, hit enter. And once again, our formatting is correct. It's done for us. Our cell is green on gray. We are looking good. All right. Next, we want to write some predicted values. Now, notice we want to write the equation y equals mx plus b. That's the formula we want, y equals mx plus b. Right down here, I'm going to type what my equation looks like, everybody, okay? So my equation is the di distance D, D equals, my slope is 18.57x, and my y-intercept is negative 79.88, so just put minus 79 point, whoops, 79.88, got a little typo going on there, okay? That's my equation. So I want to use that equation as a model to work with. So I'm gonna go right up here and I'm gonna make myself an equation, okay? Equals, what did I put down here? M, right, 18.57. So this time click on the cell, there's M right there, M, X is the value right here that I'm trying to predict a distance for given that I know the speed. So click on that. Okay. Now, that's a problem. I just clicked on it, but I forgot to put my mathematical operator in there. So back out of there, back out. B21 is what I want. Now I want to put multiplied by, multiplied by, see and put my operator in there. Now click on E12, there you go. All right, now, plus my intercept, which is B20. Now just pause right there for a moment and just ponder, what did we just do? We wrote the equation equals M is cell B21, that's my slope. X is the value of the speed that I'm trying to predict the stopping distance for, okay? I put the asterisks in it to multiply B21 times E12. Then I put plus B20. B20 is my intercept. That is the speed I will be going 
when I, I mean, sorry, that's the distance I will be stopping. It will take me to stop when my speed is zero. We'll talk more about that later. All right, now before we go, we got to make some careful changes here, everybody. So take your left, your mouse, left click right here on this function bar and right arrow over and put a dollar sign, a dollar sign, that shift four, a dollar sign between the B and the 20. Put a dollar sign between the B and the 21. What that does is lock my formula, right? You heard me say that. It locks the formula. What do I mean by that? It does the absolute value or makes static B21 and B20 so they don't move so that I can copy the formula and those two cells will not move down. All right, so now hit enter. All right, and you can see I have a value predicted here. Now watch what I said, watch. I'm gonna left click this and just drag it down a couple, just a couple, two or three here. Notice I my formula is all done, right? Look, it still says B20, B21, right? B20 right here, B21 right there because I locked them in place. Excel calls it the absolute value. I locked those cells in place so that I could drag my formula down and they won't move. But notice the E value is changing. It started out E12, now it's E15, it's changing, okay? So I'm not gonna do any more. Why would I wanna do more, right? All I gotta do is drag it down. You guys got that, all right? You got it, I got gotcha. you. Next, I wanna put a scatter plot in. This is a lot of fun. It says, make a scatter plot. Make sure to add and set the axis titles and set the chart titles. Also make sure to restrict the domain and range so that the graph fills the space and it's easy to read. All right, so let's do some work here. Well, first thing I wanna do is I want to use this data right here, the stopping distance for my graph. So I'm gonna left click from cell B11 all the way down, drag over to highlight that information. Once I've highlighted the information from cell B11 to cell C17, I'm going to click insert right up here at the top, insert, scatter plot. Do not put lines, everybody. Don't go put lines in there. I don't want lines. We don't want lines. We want just points. So click just the points. All right, and there we go. Now take your mouse. Let's reframe this. Let's drag it to where it needs to go. It looks good. All right, now, if you don't like that color, choose something else. You can get a little bit different. See, I made the points different. The, the uh, font is different. I can click up here on this chart, and I can add all kinds of things. I can make it different colors. I have options. I can make it blue, whatever I want to do, okay? You can make it yours, whatever you want. All right, now, I need to do a little bit of work. It said to add the titles. So click on your scatter plot. Just go ahead and click on it, left mouse click. Click the plus sign, add data labels. All right, let's add, no, I don't want data labels. Take those off. I want axis titles. All right, so I want the primary, horizontal, and vertical axis titles. Good. Now, remember everybody, what was my value here it's the x values this is the speed so down here in this axis title i'm going to type the word speed okay so speed is along the x-axis that comes from column b right here that's the speed all right two four six eight that's miles per hour right there okay over here i want to click on this axis title and i want to and here, I want to type the word distance. Okay, so I'm going to type the word distance, and we're all done. I now have speed and distance, if I could spell correctly, right? That'd be even better. There we go, speed and distance. All right, good. We're having fun. We're doing good. Next, I want to click this chart element again. And I want to add a trend line. So let's add a trend line. Let's click the right arrow and let's get some more options. Now, what I want to do next is I want to extend this. Everybody notice on my predicted values, it goes from two to 20. 
my scatter plot values go from five to 15. I'm talking about the X value. So I want to go backwards from two to five. That's backwards three. Just go backwards three, four, five. It doesn't really matter, okay? So you just want to be sure that you're including all of your data values that are you given in your prediction column. All right, so I'm going to go backwards four here just to make sure I have them all included. Just hit enter. All right, I want to go forwards. I want to go from 15 to 22. That is seven forward. All right, I'm going to go seven forward, hit enter. And now I have all my extensions. I have my scatter plot. I want to now set the display equation on my chart. I do that by clicking the box right here, display equation. And you can see it's there and I am done. Once again, if I want to change this for any reason, I can go up here and I can click. Oh, I like that one much better, don't you guys? Yeah, that looks good. All right. Now, everybody, we're down to the last little part. We have our formulas. We have our chart. We have our titles. We have our labels. We have everything. We are looking good. Scroll down here. It wants us to use the graph to approximate the stopping distance at 19 meters per second. It says use the graph, okay? So at 19 meters per second, I'm right here. Go up here, and my value is going to be right there. Okay, so I'm looking at my graph at 19, go up, it would be there. You can tell me right here, everybody, if I fill this in from 18 to 20, if it was 19, it would have to be right in between those, okay? So you can exactly, you can, well, you can predict very closely by looking at your graph between 18 and 20 when you fill those in, and that will tell you exactly what it's going to be on your graph. All right, next. I want to interpret the slope and the intercept. Now notice right here, it says for every one meter per second in speed, there is a one meter increase in stopping distance. Everybody, that's the slope. That's what you had right there, right there, the slope. All right, so if I took that number from that box right there and I put it in that blank space, I would answer that question. If the speed is zero meters per second, that is the intercept, everybody, the intercept. If it is zero meters per second, the stopping distance is predicted to be blank meters. That's your intercept. Does that make sense? I'm going to let you guys think about that. Okay. And once again, that is all the fun that we can handle for right now, guys. Be sure to check your checklist. Did I do everything properly? Have I answered all the boxes? Have I given it my best here? Guys, the math whisper here is over and out. You have fun, and I will see you in the forums.